Hi, my name is Helen Chin Liu. I am a certified reflexologist located in Medfield, and I own the company called Heal in Place. Contact information 508 359 6463. My web address is www.healinplacemedfield.com. Thank you for joining me. I am going to do a short presentation on how reflexology could help to alleviate migraine headaches. So I'm going to demystify reflexology for you, and this is something you will be able to do from your home. To give you a short history about reflexology, it is an ancient art of healing. It's been around for more than 5,000 years, uh, discovered among the Chinese and Egyptian. And the healing practice has been used for literally thousands of years and has made a big comeback within the last 50 years. And what I would like to show you today is how most headache sufferers are very, very stressful people and they hold a lot of tension. What I'd like to demonstrate is how to relax the feet and then go and do some pressure point releases on the head. These are just very simple movements that you could do. Uh, it's not scary. All you have to do is just have the confidence that you want to help either yourself or a loved one. So we're going to start on the feet. And I'm going to show you a few little tips and then we're going to move on to the head. So this is my friend Jean, which you may be able to see a little bit later. She's been, uh, she's been with me as a patient for the last two years, and Jean suffers from chronic headaches. And she comes regularly for reflexology sessions that she has found tremendous relief, where she at, currently suffers from migraines practically every single day. She's affected by the barometric pressure. So once the temperature goes up and goes down, Jean is either not feeling comfortable with the shift of energy. So as I'm working with Jean's feet, I'm helping her to her body to adapt to the energy changes. So we're going to start with the feet, and here we go. So the usual techniques of reflexology is using your fingers and your thumbs. The movement itself is very similar to an inchworm. So you just imagine you're observing an inchworm when he, and you're watching it as it's moving slowly. You'll notice that the movement is very slight and the inchworm never takes its body off the surface. So as you're doing reflexology movement, imagine just a fingertip is touching. You always have skin to skin contact. You never want to flop up and down. The smaller you can make the movement, the easier it is to hit all those reflex points. And the bottom of the feet, there's more than 72 nerve endings, so the smaller you can make your movement, the more apt that you're going to be able to release the stress in those points. So we're going to start off with relaxing her spine. The spine is on the inside of her foot. So all you're going to do is, using your thumb, you're going to take small movements where your this is where the tailbone is, right about here, and you're working all the way up on the foot. So you're working all the way up. Again, if you can make your finger movement as small as possible, you're apt to touch every part of the spine and start the relaxation protocol. You could take your second hand and support the foot, and you do this three times. I'm just going a little bit quicker, only due to time factor. From the spine, we are going to work the toes. Your toes represent your head. So here, in your big toe, you move your thumb from the base, from the inside of the big toe, and you're working to the tip. And you just gently bring your thumb all the way down and move it over slightly. Again, use a very small movement. Your fingers are on the top of the foot to support. You come all the way down. Here, you're just relaxing the jawline. You're relaxing the head. 
and if you want to make the person sleepy, there is an indentation right about here, just like a little dimple, and that's your penile gland. The penile gland will, is a relaxation, not only part of your endocrine system, but it will help the body to relax. And you could put your thumb right at where that little indentation is. It feels like a little cushioning, and you rotate it to clockwise. And this usually makes the person very, very sleepy. So you keep moving inchworm all the toes from the base to the top of the head, doing a little swirl on top for relaxing, relaxing the body. Bring your thumb back down and start again, inchworming all the way up. And you're, trying, you're covering the whole surface of the bottom of each toe. So work your way up and swirling it. And then if you have run out of thumbs or fingers, switch to your other hand. And do a quick swirl. From the outside to the inside of the toe and swirl. Again, you can repeat the process. You could do it up to three times. Now to work on the shoulders, just to relax the shoulder. From the outside of your little toe working your way in, you thumb walk from the edge to all the way in. Bring your thumb all the way back out. Don't drag it. And start again. Three times. This will start to relax the shoulders. And I'm doing, what I'm doing right now is just focusing on the shoulder and just relaxing it. And remember, I'm using only the tip of the thumb. And most people have neck issues, and their neck is usually very tight. Using your thumb and your forefinger, you have your thumb on the top here, and your forefinger here in the back, and you're going to finger walk all the way across for the neck area. This will start to loosen up all the neck and all the pressure that you've been built up from the day. So after this protocol, what I would normally do is go to the top, go to her head now and just help her release some of the pressure that's been built up from the headache. Oh, and um, before I forget, once you're done with the right foot, repeat it for the left foot. So you've got to do the same protocol. So you start basically on the spine. Can take that back. Start with the spine. Again, use your thumb walk. And you're using your left hand, you just walk up on the spine. From there, you want to walk each toe. Do a vertical toe walk. Your thumb is on the surface and your forefinger is in the back. And you want to walk the toe and then swirl on the top. And you repeat this process with each toe. And the further relaxation technique, you take your thumb and you're looking for that soft spot right there for the penile gland, and you're going to rotate it clockwise just for a second. Now to relax the shoulders, your thumbs go to the edge, and you're going to walk in. Again, skin-to-skin -skin contact, and the slower you can make your movement, the better it is for the person. You might hear little crunchy noises, and you're breaking up any little deposits that might have collected. And again, working on the neck, using your thumb and forefinger. Just move thumb walk across the neck area. Now we're going to do uh, to release the pressure on uh, Jean's head to relieve some of the pain that she's experiencing. Jean just waved. Jean is my client. 
I'm going to do a little short demonstration on how to release the pressure that built up in the head. Uh, most I noticed most uh, migraine sufferers they have a tendency to have a really tight jaw. So what I would do is I would use a little bit of hand lotion when I do this pressure release because I don't believe in taking off anyone's skin and it's already painful enough. So I use anything that has a good slippery lotion. So I just take a dab of my hand and I might just gently put it along the jaw. I notice like with most migraines, suffer, they start from the jaw, working its way up towards the ears, working all the way up to the temples and working up to the forehead. So what I'm going to do is just gently gently apply light pressure. The pressure should be comfortable. It's not good to make the person scream underneath your hands. <laughs> but just gently in the circle of motion working its way to the ear to the temple. You could do circular motions or you could go straight depending on where the headache is. And any place that feels like this tension built up, work in that area a little bit more. And how do you know the tension's built up? Well, the person underneath will either be screaming or yelling at you, or the person will obviously make that indication that, yeah, it hurts. So focus in that area because what happens, the energy is blocked up and what, by gently with the circular motion, what you're doing is bringing oxygen and blood to that area. So, the pressure release could be done in either direction. You could work from the jaw all the way up or vice versa. And I noticed too, see Jean's trying hard not to make a face because right now she's been releasing a lot of the pressure in her head. And I've also noticed too, with migraine sufferers, they also have this really tightness right behind the throat, in the back of the throat, where pressure it builds up quite a bit along this area. So, I, and I, in this area, I only work in one direction, working this way down towards the collarbone. And after I'm finished with this side, I would follow, I would repeat the same procedure on the other side of the face, working from the jawline all the way up to the forehead, and you can work in either direction, you work it up or work it down, and also in the back of the neck on the other side. So this is my two minute tips on how to alleviate migraine headaches and to relieve some of the pressure that's built up. This is Helen Chin Liu of The Healing Place. Um, contact information, 508-359-6463. You may call me if you have any questions about migraines or visit my website at www.healingplacemedfield.com. Thank you and have a good day.